take our four standard deviations, remembering that if I'm trying to plot all the data so I have a pretty nice bell curve that has all the information in it so I can see the tails of the curve, four standard deviations would be the vast majority of the data. So I can do that by taking the standard deviation, 815 times four, and then I'm gonna subtract that from the middle point or mean, 2189, to get to the uh, 1071. Uh, it's rounded here, so it's not exact. So let me do that again. 815 times four minus the 2189, about uh, 1069. Now that's a negative number. So you might say, well, why don't I just stop it at zero? Because, and you could, but sometimes it's nice to, to try to plot it all the way down in the negative. So you see the whole shape of the bell uh, and it can give you another verification by the percentages adding up possibly to 100%. So we'll keep it for now just to demonstrate that. Then if I do this the other way, 815 times four standard deviations plus 2189, we get to the high point of the 5448 on the calories. So my count then over here, if I'm going to say, all right, let's count this thing out. We're going uh, uh, negative X's and then we're gonna go all the way down to the positive. Now I've cut some of it out here. We'll have the whole thing in Excel, but I'm just gonna, then it goes into the positive. Here's the positive calories and so on. Then we can do our P of X calculation. This would be the norm dot dist. Oh, actually notice that this X here, uh, we did this with a formula that we'll demonstrate in Excel as well because what we want to do is go from negative 1069 up to positive 5448. Now you could do that by putting negative 1069, negative 1068, highlighting those two and having Excel see the sequence as you go down, but you'd have to go down 5,488 times. So it might be faster to use the formula of sequence. And what we want is the sum of those two plus one in terms of how many columns do we want? We want, or rows, not columns, 5448 plus 1069. We want 6517 uh, columns here. So that would be uh, 6517 plus one columns. And then skipping the start, that's why we have two commas. And then the starting point is gonna be that 1069. Then it'll plot all of these X's for us without us having to kind of drag it down. Once we have that, we can then do our norm.dist. Now it looks funny because calories are negative up top, but remember we kept the negatives uh, for, the, for the examples of the curve of a normal distribution so that we can get the full four standard deviations on the low side. Norm.dist, we're taking the mean and the standard deviation, which of course would be this number and this number in our function or formula. And then we've got, does it, should it be cumulative? It's going to be not cumulative or zero. So then if we do this all the way down, you can see that it's plotting these out. Now, if I get into the positive numbers down here, so now we've got the, the likelihood of our data set being at 126 calories is 0 0.0020. So note, when we're looking at this, we're getting pretty small numbers in part due to the fact that that our calories are a pretty small unit of measurement. So, so that means if I'm looking at just this one calorie point of 166, then the percent is pretty low. It's likely that we're going to be asking questions about ranges, like what's the likelihood of being 167 or below or something like that, which you would be tempted to sum it all up but you'd have to use another formula because we're talking about area under the curve. Although, because this is much more detailed because we're using a pretty fine detailed approach here, you get a pretty good approximation <laughs> if you were just to sum, sum up the whole thing. We'll talk more about that later though. So now we, we wanna be, so here's where an issue comes up. We wanna be able to compare this to the actual count. Now, the ways we've done that in the past is we said, okay, well, I can take my actual count. I can count all of the all of the numbers over here using a count formula of this. How many how many data points do we have with a count function? 
and it comes out to 457. So we have 457, far less data points than the last example we had where we had like 4,000 data points. So I could say, I'm gonna take this number times to 457, but you're gonna get, you're gonna get these really small fractions of the number because we have such small units of uh, measurement here. Or last time what we did is we, we grouped all of our, all of our actual data over here into bins or buckets based on the calorie counts. But that's still not gonna work quite as well this time because, because there's, there's such fine data over here that we're just gonna have a bunch of zero, 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 and then every once in a while, we'll have one that landed into a bucket and then a bunch of zeros because again, we have so many uh, small units of, of the calorie count. So for example, here is us taking the percent uh, times uh, times the count. So remember that the count was, what was the count? Uh, 457. So if I go down here, even to one of the larger percents, it's still a quite a small number. If I take that uh, 457, I think it was, times, and I'll multiply it times this one, which is 0. 0.00021, if I put it in decimal format, then you get this really small number. And this small number, is, isn't going to match any actual data count because of course the data count is just going to be a one. You can't have less than one of the data. So when I match that up over to my actual frequency, so this is the actual frequency, meaning we're looking at these in terms of buckets and this would be counting how many times in our actual data set we had a count that was above 126, but below uh, and including 127 and you get a bunch of zero, 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 zero for all of them. And then every once in a while, you're gonna have a one uh, over here uh, in our frequency. So it's gonna be difficult to compare those out. Last time when, 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 this, uh, when we had different examples in the past, when we were talking about heights, uh, for example, or weight, then, we, then this frequency count kind of lined up fairly nicely because we didn't have such small units of measurement and we were able to then take the percent of the total and give a comparison of the percent of the total and the P of X over here.